Today we're gonna learn how to create gorgeous hair in Photoshop by adding dimension to it. With this super easy technique, I'm gonna share with you three examples with three little variations so that no matter what type of hair is thrown at you, you'll be able to crush it to beauty. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are back in the mystical world of Photoshop and if you want to download any other photos used in the video, make sure to go ahead and check the links in the description. So first of all, let's zoom into the hair. That's the first thing that you need to do. Next, it's very simple. Click on this adjustment layer icon and choose curves, okay? Curves, little tiny happy curves. Now, click on the middle just once. Click on the middle and drag it up. Now this brightens the whole photo. We don't want to do that. We want to add dimension just to the hair. So what will we do? We'll create a mask, we'll hide it behind a mask. Now, since adjustment layers come already free with a mask, we don't have to create a mask. Just select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. This inverts the mask, okay? What is the concept of mask again? Black conceals, white reveals. Wherever there is black inside of a mask, that area of the layer or the adjustment layer will not appear. Wherever there is white, that area will show up, that area will appear. Right now, we cannot see the curves because whole of the mask is black, okay? So what do we do? Just zoom in, take the brush, increase the size a bit. And by the way, I'm holding the Alt or Option, the right mouse button, drag it to the right to make it bigger, drag it to the left to make it smaller, drag it up to make it soft, drag it down to make it hard. So make sure it's soft, make sure it's small, and zoom in quite a bit. Make sure the foreground color is white and you can always press D, D for dog, to reset the swatches to black and white and make sure mask is selected and only have to do flow 100, opacity 100. Just dab, bam, done. You add that shine to the hair and just keep doing it in areas you think there should be a shine or there is already a shine but not enough. Okay, so in this area I think there should be. Now, if you wanna increase the size of the brush, Go ahead and increase it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about whether the effect is exceeding the boundaries of hair. Don't worry about that right now. We can always go ahead and erase that. All you have to do, just control the size of the brush and just keep on dabbing. Right in there, we think there should be. Okay, that looks good. Here, don't worry about it. It is getting into the skin, but we can erase that later. But right now, all you have to do, just dab. At this point, we think that's great. What other points? Let's zoom in, this little points, okay? These little points decrease the size of the brush and just dab it once. There we go, here and there. See, accordingly, choose the size of the brush. There we go. Okay, that looks cool. It looks wonderful. We can add one more over there. And I think it's more than enough, enough, enough. Let's zoom out and let's have a look at the before and after. So this is the after and this is the before. Of course, this is too much. And of course, we can go ahead and paint a little more here and probably a little bit over there. Now, let's decrease either the opacity or the amount of brightness inside of the curves. So what you can do, you can go ahead and decrease the opacity from right there by doing this and it looks fine. Also what you can do, you can keep the opacity at 100 and click on the adjustment layer icon. Every adjustment layer has its own specific icon, which if you click, the properties will show up. So it's curves. I'll just go ahead and click on the icon and the curves properties show up. Now, let's decrease it. It's too much, of course. That looks wonderful. Okay, now let's zoom out and have a look at the before and after. So this is the before. This is the after. Look the kind of a difference it makes. Now, of course, it has painted some areas. It has painted some extra areas, got into the skin, and we want to erase that. So how do we do it? We can take the brush, make sure the foreground color is black this time because black is the area which doesn't show up, right? So make sure it's black, make sure the mask is selected, and then just erase out the areas with black. Okay, make sure it's black. Okay. Simple. If you cannot see, if you really want to see which areas have you painted, you can always go ahead and press the backward slash key. Red are the areas that are painted in black. Original colored areas are the areas which are, which you have painted in white, which are selected, okay, which are targeted. The areas which are showing up, okay. So if you paint the rest of the areas with black, it will just go away, okay. See, there's an extra over there. You can control that very easily. 
and we are pretty much good to go. Press the backward slash key again and have a look. It's done. Before, after. At this point, if you think you might have to reduce it, you can always go ahead and select the curves and reduce it that way or decrease the opacity. The choice is yours. Now have a look before, after. Adds a dimension to the hair, makes it look really, really good. Now at this point, you can also erase parts of the hair as well. So at this point, select the mask, you can also erase this area just like this, okay? So if you wish to. So that's all there is. Time for us to move to the second example. And this time we got black hair. Now one of the problems with black hair is that when you try to highlight that, okay, just like mine, when you try to highlight that, the color doesn't seem right, okay? So in this example, I've already created the mask. We have the curves. I'm gonna increase the brightness of this lane. So let's do it, okay? By the way, I've already created a mask so that you guys don't have to wait. Okay, this looks right, but the hair, it kind of doesn't look right in place. If it does look right for you, stop. If it doesn't look right for you, if you wanna add a color tint to it, color shade to it, here's what you need to do. From RGB, you can go to any color that you want. For example, we wanna add a little bit yellow tone to it, so we will go to blue. Now, there's no yellow. No problem. Blue is the opposite of yellow. Always remember, blue is the opposite of yellow. Green is the opposite of magenta. Red is the opposite of cyan. RGB, CMY, opposites. Okay, so to add yellows, what do we do? We decrease blues, all right? So simply go ahead and decrease the blues a bit. And there you have added a little bit of yellow to the hair. Have a look at it before, after, see? now. It's looking a little strange, so let's go ahead and add a little red to it, like that. Okay, probably you want to decrease greens. Let's try it just a bit. Okay, now let's have a look at the before and after. Before, after. That way, if you want to add some shades, some colors to the highlights, you can try this method as well. Let's move to example number three. And in this example, I'm going to show you an additional technique and also the problems that you might run into and how to solve them. So in this example, as you can see, the lips were a little pale. So I went ahead and darkened it and added some colors. So this is how it looks now. Again, it's personal preference. Now, if you want to know how to do this, make sure to go ahead and let me know down in the comments below so that I can create a video about it for you. Now, I already went ahead and added the curves adjustment lens and already created the mask. So let's just go ahead and try to brighten it. So when we brighten it, have a look at the problems that you that we might have. So this is good, this is looking nice, but have a look, if we zoom in, the colors are more saturated. Because the hair was a little orange and red-ish, when we try to increase the brightness, when we try to highlight the hair with curves, it kind of saturated it and it doesn't look right. So what to do? What if we tell Photoshop, hey Photoshop, I want you to just increase the brightness. I don't want you to affect the colors. I just want you to affect the luminosity levels. So what shall we do now? Change the blend mode from normal to, as the name suggests, luminosity. Now as soon as you change the blend mode to luminosity, have a look at this. It stops affecting the colors and it just affects the brightness, the luminosity levels. Now have a look at the before and after. So this is the normal, it kind of saturates it. And when you change to luminosity, it just affects the luminosity values. Now, we have dabbed in several places. I'm gonna show you which areas have we painted in. So there are a couple of dark areas which have been brightened. So these dark areas, and we wanna make the brightness remain in just the areas which are brighter, not the areas which are darker. So let's press the backward slash key again. And for that, here's what we need to do. To make sure that we have just painted in the bright areas, you don't have to do with all of the images. Double click on the right hand side of the layer, open blend if, simple. And take the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. What this is actually doing is that it's removing the dark areas of the underlying layer or the layer which is beneath it, the combined effect of the layers which are beneath it. So the dark areas of the underlying layer are being removed from the current layer. Okay, so in the underlying layer, these are the dark areas, right? If I take the slider to the right, those areas will be removed. Now have a look, they are being removed. But this is too much and this is too harsh. So here's what we do. Hold the alter option, click on that one, and just break the slider, make it smooth. Just like that. Now, that looks like something. Once you're satisfied, hit OK. Now have a look at the before and after. Before blend if, after blend if. I hope you can see the difference. So before blend if, everything is bright, it, it's looking dull. After blend if, 
it's refined now what you can also do you can create one more curves adjustment layer you can also highlight and you can make it darker as well right if you can highlight let's also darken it so create one more curves adjustment layer and this time take it down and select the mask Control or command i take the brush make sure the foreground color is white and then zoom in and paint other areas which should be dark so just dab dab change the blend mode from normal to luminosity because see it's saturating them dab and probably any other areas that you think should be darkened dab no not this area probably this area and we are pretty much good to go let's zoom out and have a look at the before and after so this is the after and this is the before after now you can also go ahead and add some more right in there probably someone some of it in here probably some in here and you can really go ahead and sculpt out the hair just like just so okay now once you're done always go ahead and press backwards slash key and just correct those areas we have painted extra so we will paint over those areas with black which are extra so just like this extra areas and we are pretty much good to go we are done press the backward slash key again and let's have a look at the before and after so this is the before this is the after isn't that wonderful so that's how you make gorgeous hair in photoshop by adding dimension to it all you have to do create a curves adjustment layer brighten it up invert the mask and just dab on the highlights and it's done and if you want to add more dimension create one more curves adjustment layer Take it down, invert the mask, dab on the dark areas. Boom! Now, if it's affecting the color, change the blend mode to luminosity. If you want to add some tints and some things like that, you can always go ahead and play with the reds and the greens and the blues. And that's all there is. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss a thing. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice people for making this episode possible and making Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.